TV weight loss contests. This video is long overdue. Before I talk about the things I hate about them, let me start off on a positive note with the things that I love. I've made a list. Oh no, this piece of paper is totally blank. In my opinion, TV weight loss contests actually do a great job of showing us how fucked up the weight loss industry is. Example one, if your exclusive goal is to change the number on the scale as fast as possible, how do you approach that? Sustainable, healthy habits or rapid crash dieting. Extreme weight loss goals can push people to extreme behaviors. So we shouldn't be surprised that some former contestants of The Biggest Loser USA claimed that they have used laxatives, diuretics, diet pills, amphetamines, and even admitted to vomiting. Are we still saying this is about improving people's health? On a completely unrelated side note, apparently The Biggest Loser can be a little bit trigger happy with fines and legal action. So I'd like to reiterate that I'm just presenting information that I found online along with my own opinion. There is an unfortunately common side effect of placing such an extreme emphasis on the number on the scales because yes, diuretics and laxatives will result in weight loss, but they will do fuck all for levels of actual body fat. There is research supporting this that dates at least as far back as the 1970s. When you place too much emphasis on how much people weigh, they will try and beat the scales at the expense of healthy habit change. But healthy habit change isn't the goal, is it? It's about losing as much weight as fucking possible in a short period. And although The Biggest Loser and similar shows from around the world have tamed somewhat over the years, let's not forget what the original vibe was. Greg, run. Greg, if you don't run, I will pull Alex on the floor and I will break every bone in his body. Bit fucking unnecessary. Greg, if you don't keep running, I'm going to shoot your dog and burn down your home. Yeah, yeah, I just, I really care about Greg's health, you know? No, 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 Greg. Greg, no. You're gonna throw up, no, throw up in front of me. Let me see it. If you do not throw up right now, we're gonna have problems. Whilst some of you might love the militant, sadistic style of training, this entire workout was preceded by the two trainers saying they wanted to break the contestants. It might be worth considering whether this is appropriate for people who are brand new to exercise. Off into the mud pit. There you go. There you go. Um, um, um. He will happen. Um, 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 um. Where's Terry? Looks like Terry has just hurt herself. What happened? What happened, T? <laughs> it snapped. Nothing to see here, just one contestant casually snapping something. I've worked in gyms since I was 18 years old. Do you know how many clients have snapped a bone, tendon, or ligament whilst in one of my training sessions? Yes, um, oh no, it's, it's zero. But most personal trainers are savvy enough to know that you don't give structured plyometrics right off the bat to people that don't have any level of base conditioning, let alone a fucking obstacle course. Some contestants have alleged that on The Biggest Loser, they went into four hours of exercise on day one, and a couple of them were airlifted to hospital, and one of them ended up pissing blood. No big deal though, all of this is in the name of health. And on the note of hyper-focusing on weight loss, regardless of health. Bit fucking dramatic. What's, what's with the music? Nine pound weight loss. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't dance. I don't dance. Nine pounds. Your second week in a row. Wait, what? Nine pounds. Your second week in a row. Someone loses nine pounds two weeks in a row and it's celebrated like it's fucking Christmas. I don't know who needs to hear this, but that isn't a weight loss goal that any reputable professional would recommend. Three pounds. Wow. I don't really know what to say. I busted my butt this week. Sorry that I didn't get as much as you wanted. I see your face, I see you disappointed. If you watch this clip without the sound, based on the reaction of the room, you would think that this contestant has just admitted their favorite hobby is seal clubbing. There are a fuckload of other clips like this, contestants literally crying when they've only lost two pounds that week because their goal was three pounds. Newsflash, you could lose body fat every single week and your weight will still fluctuate up and down based on things like menstrual cycle, general water retention, and how big your morning shit was. But with TV weight loss programs, the name of the game is making great television, obviously. And when people don't get the results they expect, they are sometimes treated like shit, like this clip from Operation Transformation in Ireland. Charlotte, let's, let's face the facts. You are 
very unhealthy for your young age. This program is about getting people healthy and making them to stay there. This program is about spirit, and to be honest, I'm a little bit annoyed to see you there in your tears. Fucking hell. I've said this to you before, and I'm saying it to you too again. Please cup on and wipe those tears and work hard next week. I want an absolute detailed diet diary. I want to know what you are doing every moment. I want to see you winner in a okay. year's time in a healthy weight. Okay. She went from supposedly caring about her health to berating her for being upset. You could be forgiven for thinking that people's eating and exercise behaviours are intertwined with their emotional state or something. No, 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 that can't be it. We just need to shout at them more. There's actually a research paper that shows after watching The Biggest Loser Show, viewers had a greater dislike of obese individuals. Which probably shouldn't be surprising given the nature of the humiliation. Sorry. I mean competition. I am sure that some contestants will have reported positive results. They may have lost weight and improved health markers and sustained that for a long term after the show. And I'm not discounting their experiences. If that's the case, awesome. But what is the cost? These programs often place an extreme and isolated emphasis on rapid changes in body weight to the point that it's basically a glorified crash diet contest, which pushes contestants to sacrifice their physical and mental health, all in the name of entertainment, to create a program that literally results in viewers having a greater dislike of people struggling with their weight. If anything, it's a great fucking demonstration of just how fucked up the weight loss industry is.